it was lucky that we are already organized because 1973 comes around and here we have the largest UFO wave ever documented with hundreds and hundreds of UFO sightings. But then in the summer of 73, we had the biggest outbreak of Bigfoot sightings ever documented. And that went on to 1974. And many of those Bigfoot sightings were in daylight. And many of them were at very, very close range. And that's also the time when we began to find that there may be a lot more to the Bigfoot mystery and UFO phenomena than any of us had ever expected. Suddenly, they're calling me about hearing these strange screams and cries and howls, something heavy bipedal walking in the woods. But they're also reporting UFOs and these very small little spheres of light low to the ground, very close to their homes and, the, and near the bushes. My wife had seen a light that shined, like a flash in the woods, and then it turned down to, like she said, like a, a lightning bug size. We heard footsteps walking towards the vehicle with nothing. We couldn't see anything, so we went to pull out. Something hit the door next to my shoulder. I looked back at Eric. I said, Eric, you need to come over here now. I said, it's back, and it's coming. Bigfoot is much stranger than I had ever imagined that there's a physical and a non-physical component to whatever it is we're dealing with. Every time I'm down there, I, I feel dread. It almost feels like you're gonna get murdered. And it gets stranger and stranger, this whole phenomenon. As strange as it sounds, these things may actually change physical form. <laughs> Whatever we're dealing with, it seems to have the capability to suddenly appear, leave evidence, and then it's gone. but it'll begin to fade away and disappear or it'll physically change from one form into another right in front of the witness's eyes. So where are these things coming from? Where are they going? It just adds more to the mystery. <laughs>